I'm talking about uh, this treatment called TULSA, or MR-guided transurethral ultrasound ablation, which has been kind of a labor of love for me now for more than 10 years, beginning with, uh, it really is the work of a, a fellow named Rajiv Chopra, who was a postdoc fellow in the imaging research group at our place, uh, beginning with in silico and then canine models and eventually uh, first in human. And now this has been approved, commercialized, and uh, uh, gradually, I think, is being uh, distributed around the world. So uh, the idea is this is an energy-based therapy for uh, intermediate, mostly intermediate risk. Prostate cancer it lends itself to focal or whole, whole gland ablation. We all know the limitations, quality of life effects, et cetera, of radical therapy. So another way to look at this is the the next generation of HIFU, although it, it's planar ultrasound, so technically it's not focused ultrasound. And the basic concept is called a, a co closed loop controlled system. So it's done in the MR core. It's done with a transducer that's about 18 French. Uh, it looks like an 18 French sound, but it has these 10 five millimeter transducers arrayed along it. And these are, uh, this is placed into the patient on a gantry. He is wheeled into the uh, MRI core. You image with MRI to check the position of the thing. There's, a, there's a, the um, urethral applicator, this is called, has a urethral cooling system. It's got a rectal cooling device. The energy is delivered transurethrally, so there really is uh, no energy delivered through the rectum. So far, uh, of the roughly, probably around 1,000 cases that have been treated worldwide, there's not a single uh, rectal injury that's been reported. And, so, and, and the key to this is the capacity of MRIs to deliver a real-time thermal map, which a t with a typical uh, three Tesla MRI that's updated every three seconds. So of course, this has no value in a normal human being where your temperature is 37 degrees uniformly, but if you're using a thermal energy to heat tissue to destroy it, the idea of having a real-time thermal map is extremely powerful. And so um, basically the patient is prepared, general anesthesia usually, or spinal procedure takes somewhere between two and three hours in most cases. Uh, the, the transducer is inserted over a guide wire by the urologist, moved into the MRI suite, and then you look at each MRI slice in the transverse section and outline the target that you want the uh, usually 57 to 59 degrees centigrade to achieve. And then basically you hit the big red start button and the energy is delivered from each one of these. Let me just see here. This is, this is maybe I'll just run this thing, which kind of shows it in. So here, here is the patient with the transducer inserted with the, the 10 five millimeter uh, independently driven uh, transducers and there you see sort of the, that it's outlined you set the temperature at typically 59 degrees so it's a much gentler heating than with haifu for example where the tissue is heated to the boiling point and what happens is you look at the bottom here in each one of these slices you see the thermal map and you see the temperature increase moving out to the target line at the outside and once in all 10 of these the temperature has reached the target temperature, the transducer starts to rotate, and you can see here a complete prostatic ablation achieved in about half an hour, typically. Uh, the, the procedure is actually quite quick. It's the positioning, the checking, and dealing with glitches, which is not infrequent, that really take the time. So um, let me just go back here. So it's uh, directional, not f uh, focused ablation. Uh, there's no volume limitation because it's a transurethral device, so it's really in the middle of the prostate. There has yet to be, I, no patient's been treated with, you know, 300 cc prostate, but certainly patients in the range of 100 to 150 cc's, which is an, a, a really a, a benefit compared to HIFU, for example. And so it's this closed loop automated system that makes it really appealing that the 
amount of energy that's delivered is precisely a function of the temperature that the tissue achieves. There's no guesswork. If, you, if there's a cold spot, you see the cold spot. You can go back and retreat that cold spot. Uh, and this, again, just shows, I think, yeah, no, that's the one I just showed. So, so this is kind of a long story. It's a 10-minute talk, but this we did about uh, back around six or eight years ago, um, a whole series of dog studies to demonstrate how precise this was and what the distance between the targeted tissue and normal tissue it turned out to be around 1.3 millimeters, really a lot of precision. Um, we did the first in man, which was 15 cases of doing this for three or four hours, and then my taking the patient in the operating room doing a radical prostatectomy. So each one of those cases was a day out of my life. I had black hair before we started this trial, and something happened, but it was really you know huge, huge undertaking, but again demonstrated the precision of this therapy. Um, and then, and then, then we started to actually treat. The cancers that we were that had been identified on MRI and uh, demonstrated uh, uh, cancer treatment, and again with good precision, and then this rolled out to a phase one safety and precision study, which was very conservative treatment. The actual cancer ablation was not that great. The PSA response was was quite profound, with 90% reduction in ablation volume. So we've also seen that with the uh, TAC trial, which I'll show you in a minute, which was the, the registration trial. The median prostate volume go, went from 40 to 4 cc's as measured by MRI. So this is the TAC da data, which was published about a little less than a year ago. Um, this was 115 patients, 13 centers, five countries, mostly intermediate risk. Against my wishes, a third of the patients were low risk, but the, this was not such an easy trial to accrue patients to because of the novelty of the intervention. And the primary endpoint, which was mandated by the FDA, was PSA reduction greater than 75%. So this can be criticized, like that's really a pretty non-robust surrogate marker, but again, that was FDA mandated, and secondary endpoints were basically persistent disease, uh, quality of life, complications, et cetera. And this just shows, first of all, the primary endpoint was met in something like 97% of the uh, cases, 96% uh, PSA reduction, more than 75%, and almost all the median PSA reduction was 95%. And I mentioned the volume reduction. So, you know, this really works. And here is the post, the one year post treatment biopsy results and I so there was some persistent disease we also used quite a conservative strategy when you're doing this kind of pivotal study you cannot have any serious uh, complications it can really you know blow the whole thing so this was very conservative whole gland treatment leaving tissue at the apex leaving tissue at the neurovascular bundles and despite all that about 80 percent of the patients who were grade group two at baseline were free of grade group two disease. Uh, some had some residual grade group one disease. Um, so yeah, this, just a little more of this data. I mean, it really, and, and all of the energy-based therapies look about the same in this regard, somewhere around 80 percent of patients having disease eradication. Uh, and adverse effects were really, this is a very uh, easily tolerated therapy. There were a couple of retention cases which are technically classified as grade three because they require emergency visit or hospitalization and a few infections, but really no, no strictures, uh, t sorry, few strictures, no, no fistula is what I meant to say, no fistulae and very good preservation. This is a continence recovered in virtually all patients, erectile function recovered in the majority of patients. And this is actually a new data that's going to be presented to the AUA this year formally for the first time. And essentially what it showed is the PSA response has been durable. Uh, the median PSA was 0.26, um, continued to fall compared to 0.53 at a year. There really has been stable uh, quality of life in terms of continence and erectile function. 
And this just again shows sort of what it's like watching this, where you see the the thermocline moving out to the target boundary and then kind of magically stopping in each one of these, in this case, seven individually controlled uh, slices or five millimeter transducers. And then at the end, you re image and you see at the baseline you have tissue immediately post treatment, just a big black hole. And this just shows, I just want to explain for a second, this is one of my patients who developed retention. And so I scoped them about three months, two or three months after the procedure. And this is just taken with my cell phone, but it's quite a revealing. Uh, so, so far it looks pretty normal, but then you come back, the urethra is maintained like an isthmus and just complete destruction and eradication of tissue on either side. So I felt with, with preservation of this uh, urethral isthmus, quite kind of revealing. So. In summary, um, I, this is a, a new technology. Uh, it's a complex technology. It's, there's the complexities of the MR performance and of the technology itself. There's a lot of little, little glitches that can happen. For example, movement is interpreted as a, a change in temperature. So you can get a five millimeter air bubble in the rectum moving around and everything suddenly stops because the, the device is interpreting this as, as heat excessive heat in the rectum. So you, you, there's a learning curve to learn how to avoid those kind of things. The, the first group to do this commercially was in Germany at the Alta Clinic, and they have got the treatment time down to two hours. They're doing uh, four to five cases per day, as I understand it. Uh, so it looks safe and precise, low toxicity and safety profile. It's been approved both by the FDA and Health Canada now, and I think this is beginning to ramp up as a novel alternative to, um, to uh, uh, conventional therapy. And I should add, I have no, uh, no financial uh, interest in this uh, at all. I've received some research funding from the company. Thank you very much.